right, we've taken our gearbox and we're moving it over and we've mounted it on this rail here to give us access for center line of the carriage or the elevator car that's supporting the big screen. And we're going to have a center pivot which is going to give 180 rotation to the, the big screen facing one direction when it's lowered to the other direction when it's lowered. And we're going to have a cable follower that's going to incorporate the fiber optics and uh, the control cables, probably the controller for the pivot. So basically the center uh, access of cable is going to be free flowing from the cable track assembly into the pivot and then as the TV lowers down we, we have less abrasive action on the cables for the whole system. Okay here's a good angle shot and I've got a few things set up here. I've already made a base plate for the gearbox, the new gearbox, were changed out. This is a 5 to uh, 1 versus the 10 to 1 we originally planned on and this will let us get our times down below 30 seconds to go full high uh, rise to full lower the TV assembly itself. We put two universal joints, one on each side here and we're going to run the shaft angled over to the bevel gear assembly here and we're going to incorporate the disc that we just burned out on the plasma table here. Uh, we're going to turn a round diameter that's going to become a housing for these uh, rubber lip seals bearings that we have. These bearings are 5 eighths on the uh, ID and 1 and 5 eighths on the OD. The other bearing is here on the shaft and we're going to have a half circle wall coming up here and another tube that will be holding this bearing and then we can with this loose here we'll be able to adjust the straight alignment of this shaft to uh, the gearbox itself and then when we tighten these down you'll be tightening down the four bolt flange bearing that will be holding the vertical shaft you'll have the load sitting on that radial bearing and the radial bearing will also be a good snug support for right behind both of these bevel gears so that they have nice uniform wear on the teeth and uh, and it'll be duplicated over to the other side so it's kind of giving you a heads up of uh, what we're trying to accomplish now we're going to go in we're going to start turning some discs uh, finished diameters on the disc and then turn in a couple of diameters uh, to um, create the housings for these bearings we originally uh, had a different uh, procedure in mind before we found our bearings and we were thinking about using some uh, oil like bushings and uh, but we roughed it out with just a one inch hole in the center here we're going to go ahead and drill it uh, out to a large enough diameter to go ahead and get the boring bar in there and then we're going to be doing a finished bore at about two inch diameter on these uh, two flanges <laughs> We decided to go with uh, one and seven eighths. Uh, basically, we got like one eight eighty, or about five thousandths over. But <clears throat> we're going to be making the insert to go in here and weld that in, and then the bearing will be supported in that housing. that fit. Don't have to really work at it too hard. It's going to get walled. Uh, right now we're going to go ahead and we're going to part off uh, some widths that we want for these uh, bearing enclosures uh, to protrude uh, above this plate here 
and two blank ones that are going to be used for the uh, side of the the, the radius of, of the pipe that uh, yeah, the pipe will this will be turned and prepped and this will be welded will be splitting this in half and then part of the housing will be coming in on the side here Well, we finally got these things ready to uh, heliarc in place, and I've got them pressed in uh, the centers here with a bevel cut. All right, and we'll wash that in, just a small bead. All right, now, I went in the air gas the other day because I was out, uh, my small bottles that I own, oxyacetylene, I had those refilled, and then I needed a pound of uh, silicon bronze, an eighth inch, because I was out, and I was walking in, um, <laughs> past the helmet aisle there and I instantly got a hard on so I just kind of letting you guys know got a new helmet see I have glasses and it took me a while to get used to wearing glasses all the time I got stigmatism in my left eye uh, these are full progressives they also are uh, auto tinning and everything else uh, and uh, it, it basically if I keep them on I can see exactly what the hell I'm doing and uh, the main requirement for me is having a full four inch large screen to look through because the focus of the progression down towards the bottom is there. That way I can lift up my helmet and I can run on over and I can catch this or that or I can look up and I can see far. Uh, if I wear just straight reading glasses then you got to sit there and you got to flip those on and off and uh, so it's kind of a combination of tools. Now my other radar helmet here there's nothing wrong just gave me exactly what I wanted except for the controls were on the outside and every time I flip the thing up and down I would move these and they move very easy not that it's a bad helmet it's just that I found myself really being out of darkness uh, when I I, I uh, um, if I didn't have an eye problem of course this is pretty filthy dusty because I haven't worn it in a long time. Uh, Miller made this this helmet. The adjustments are all inside. This is my very first auto changing helmet and it is probably the lightest one I've ever felt on the market. Um, but it doesn't have the big window and I cannot get the right focus and if I get it down far enough my nose is crammed into there and in the summertime you're sweating and then pretty soon you got water BBs in there you see two puddles. Um, so there's, there's a little bit, so, you know, this is my new helmet for a bit. We're going to get used to it. Some of the features I do like is the ratchet. It's not against my face. I'm hoping it's more open at the bottom and it doesn't fog as easy. The Raynor helmet does fog up quite a bit. So, um, we're going give to give it a little bit of uh, testing here and uh, we'll see what's going on. Lincoln product I've had since the Buzz Box. 
And I do, well, I do use Lincoln uh, rod. The Excalibur 7018 uh, uh, stick rod is, is my choice there on that rod. Other than that, everything else I got is blue. pusher right there. <laughs> Let's put on one that we know is at least square. <laughs> that, that walks out so bad. Yeah, much better. Okay, we're just skimming this so that uh, it'll be the inside of that pipe diameter. This OD will be this ID. 